Welcome back to the Buds Unboxed YouTube channel. Before we get started, make sure you guys go check out the giveaway details in the description below. Now, the question today or kind of the topic is, is Rasmus Sandin NHL ready? What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, from the looks of it, past couple of games that he's been playing with the Leafs, you know, granted, they, they, they did play against one of the worst teams in the division, Vancouver Canucks. I thought he looked great. He got an assist, but they also played against the Winnipeg Jets. And against the Jets, he looked really good. I thought uh, I thought he was skating really well, moving the puck out of the zone really well. He wasn't uh, letting pressure um, get to him in the in the defensive zone. He was staying composed, making the right play. He wasn't turning pucks over in the defensive zone like we see Justin Hole do a lot, um, you know, and other defensemen on the team. So uh, I thought he I thought he looked really good, really composed. Uh, with all that being said, I think to be a regular NHL player, I think we give him one more off season. I don't know if he'll be in every game uh, in the playoffs, but I definitely think by next season, he's going to be in the lineup every night. I, I don't see why he wouldn't be. I think Dermot will probably uh, be a uh, shootout because of that. Dude. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I just wanted to point out more of his, uh, Feli pointed out his, I guess, I guess just his game overall. I I I'm kind of gonna narrow in on the aspects of Rasmus and when when you guys watch him uh, as I've watched him recently in games, his his shot blocking ability for his height and his agility is just unbelievable. The way he he puts his body in front of the puck, like someone we we're used to seeing that as Hall and Muzzin, six foot five, six foot three, like in that bigger body range, and and Sandine at five eleven. That's that's pretty insane, right? So uh, he's he's making all of his abilities and and using them as best he can. And and as Feli has said many many times, he he has that offensive um, defenseman type like Morgan Riley, and we're seeing it right now with these 0.5 points per like per game right now um, as as a rook. Like that's that I personally think that's pretty crazy for for such a young player. And on top of that, he's with his block shots and everything like. He's a fantasy steal. No, I'm just kidding. Overall, he's just a. I think he's a great player, and he's he's displayed it against one of the best teams in our division, and and a team that, if, it, despite injuries right now, they'd probably give us a run for our money, and they would, uh, for that for that second round, um, when we make it, um, and uh, <laughs> and and I just I just think personally, I think Rasmus Sandin is a uh, great hockey player, and I think. I think, like Feli said, uh, as we've talked about all before, that Dermot, Dermot, uh, Dermot just isn't isn't as there as Sandin is, and we give him a couple, couple more months, couple a year and a bit to to uh, to develop himself into a way better player, and I think we can definitely see himself uh, as a starting defenseman next year or bottom six easily. I think he is going to be a fantasy steal next year. <laughs> we should do a little segment where we do like steal fantasy yeah. steals, like a mock draft or fantasy draft or something. That, that's a good idea. Next year, but but yeah, I agree. I, I think if they announce him that he's starting in the you know game one next year, for sure a fantasy steal because he's got that offensive upside. For sure, and he blocks shots. He he blocks a ton of shots. So um, yeah, I I completely agree. He's like he's kind of like that two way that you need. He he's showing that he can you know, defend NHL players like Brock Besser, like all these, all these top end guys, but he's also showing that he can jump in the play like he did with Spezza passing it to Angball as much as hoping he needed to save that. I mean, it was still a good play by Sandine. I just think the biggest points are, you know, he's, he's shown that he's NHL ready. This was kind of an audition, you know, to get into the playoffs. And I, I, I honestly do think that he will make an impact on the playoffs. The thing is just, when and where they have so many defense that it's hard to tell at this point, but he's, he's making a, a case for himself. He's playing way more physical. Um, I, I just watched him last game, just off last game. He was, he was hitting guys, you know, maybe a little bit like edgy. There was a, a questionable hit there, but you love to see it from a guy, especially who's not that big. Um, and then obviously that hit on Wheeler, that, that video kind of went viral. Um, he's shown that he's able to handle a top four role. You know, usually he's playing on the bottom pairing with um, Dermot, like like you guys said, but they put him up into a top two role even, and they put him with, with Brody. He played those minutes and he was he handled himself. He exceeded our expectations, 
and he was great. He, he handled the minutes with, with confidence. And that's, a, that's another big thing. Confidence. I mean, he looks like he belongs there. And, and like, and like Felio always says, he looks like Riley and that just shows how, how big his confidence is. So yeah. Do you, do you guys think he'll make a, a playoff appearance this year? A hundred percent. He'll be, he'll be in the playoffs for sure. Um, I wouldn't have said that a couple of weeks ago. I would have said that he's probably not ready and he probably wouldn't be smart to stick him in, but he obviously is making an impact whenever he's on the ice. Like, and, and just to kind of go back to what we're talking about a little bit about him is what you want from any draft pick ever, you know, no matter if it's Connor McDavid or, or, you know, Neil Yakupov, you want to see like progression, right? So like, looking at him on the Marlies and then playing in spot, like little, like certain games from, you know, 2018, 19, 2020. And now here um, he's shown progression every single time, right? Like it was, people were thinking that he was going to be a regular in the lineup this year um, because he's progressed so much. And then he just progressed even more. So to this point, so I think like he, in the playoffs, he's a valuable asset to the Leafs when it comes like down to it if you're looking at the lineup and saying okay let's put in Sandine or Dermot at this point if I'm standing there with them I'm saying let's put in Sandine and hope he brings an edge that you know Dermot hasn't been bringing but then again Dermot also you know he has some some of those games that you're like wow he he's pretty good for for a bottom pairing defenseman so it all depends on who's hot and who's not right yeah and, and not even that you can't even just take that into consideration we also need to think about playoff injuries and we've seen we've seen injuries this season like with that back-to-back we were missing how many players and hopefully with this playoff schedule we're not seeing a lot of back-to-backs but you know what I mean like with Riley out and everything there we're gonna see players I like like I think Hutton's gonna make uh, a a playoff appearance not even just like I know Sandine's gonna he's gonna make his mark he's not just gonna make an appearance I think I think we're gonna see something with Sandine in terms of uh, like a like a like like big, big plays to stop like two on two on one kind of plays, stuff like that. And I think we'll see Hutton too, just in terms of just straight off injury. You know what I mean? Like, and now with Bogosian, it, that could like reoccur or something. So, yeah. Well, another thing about that is that the playoffs is a big stage, right? That's where you, you know, everyone's watching the playoffs, no matter what NHL fan, whatever team you're a fan of, everyone's watching scouts of other teams you know gms everyone's watching the playoffs so everyone's zeroing in and if sandine sees his name in the lineup you know he's bound to go out there and try a lot harder not that he's not trying hard right now but he's just bound to because he knows everyone's watching this is where i make my name you know this is where i make a name for myself if i can make a difference in some of these games i can help my team win but not only that i can also make a name for myself right a lot of guys are making names for themselves starting in the playoffs Kel McCarr made a name for himself. A little different story because it was his first year. But he made a name for himself starting in the playoffs because guess what? Everyone's watching that game. Everyone hears about, oh, this guy just scored his first goal in in the playoffs, right, in his first game. Like, that's where guys make names for themselves. So in in a situation like if you're choosing, if it's me, you know, and you're choosing between, uh, for example, Hutton or Sandin even, right, I'm thinking about putting Sandin in you know, depending on how he's played prior, um, because he, he he's bound to play his heart out. Not that the other guys won't, but I think he's, he's going to have some sort of an edge because he is, you know, he's still trying to make a name for himself. Yeah. And I was just taking a quick look at his stats. I mean, depending on what the Leafs are thinking, you know, they have gone for a lot of experience this year in the playoffs, but I mean, he's only played 66 AHL games and 30 NHL games. So I didn't even realize it was that little amount, but he's for playing that many games. He's amazing out there, um, which really impressed me. Many NHL games. Pardon? I didn't even realize it was that many NHL games, to be honest. 30. Yeah. I I thought it would be more AHL, but less NHL. Yeah. Well, he's, he's still so young. So he is, he does have a long way to go, but he's really showing that he belongs here. Um, and if you guys don't have any last points, we'll wrap it up here. We saw him at a Marley's game, Eric. Remember? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, yeah we, we saw him play. Yeah, Feels he... like that was a long time, long time ago. <laughs> More than 66 games would have happened since then. Yeah, I know. 
but I guess if you're up and down, that you know, that totals to to whatever a lot. Yeah, of if games, he's up so. and down between the, the pandemic yeah. and seeing like half the season. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, yeah, this has been the buds in the box, and we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Um, to comment your opinion about Rasmus Sandin or any of the Leafs players. We love to chat in the comments and make sure you subscribe. So this has been the Buds in the Box. Bye for now.